Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode we will continue working on my 1993 Lexus LS400. So as you can see we're in a different setting than usual. This is my tiny workshop in our backyard. It's my 2 by 3 meters wooden cabin in which I do a lot of repair work. And I took you here today because I'm going to make some tools. That piece of angled steel is part of it. And I have some other things to share with you, starting by my new tripod. I got a few things on my workbench. First things I want to share is, these are the two pulleys of the serpentine belt, or the multi-rib belt. Uh, this pulley came off of the tensioner. And I got somehow got lucky the last time I needed to replace uh, this assembly uh, because the bearing has gone bad. I couldn't find a um, fitting bearing or a loose pulley wheel. I had to buy it. I had to buy the entire assembly. But now I was searching the internet and I did a lot of cross-referencing with part numbers and all. Um, I ordered all the parts. I'll tell you more about that later but I managed to find a separate pulley wheel so took it off cleaned the entire bit so it looks a bit decent all the aluminum oxidation is off and I can just replace this this whole assembly cost me about a hundred euros back in 2015 when I did my first LS400 and now I have paid about 25 euros for this pulley wheel so let's get started with today's project so what we'll be doing today is to make a bracket a tool to hold the crankshaft pulley so i can loosen the nut and sander normally you have a tool like this um, albeit a larger one you slide these two pins then in the hole of the pulley put the socket in the middle Hold the pulley with one hand and rotate the wrench, your torque wrench, with the other hand. Unfortunately, I don't have this kind of tool, so I'm making my own. This idea comes from my neighbor, which made me exactly one of these a few years back, but he lost the tool, so I have to make a new one. The thing I want to do is drill a large hole in the middle, which fits my socket, and two small nine millimeter holes which are through holes for these bolts and those two bolt into the crankshaft pulley I took some measurements uh, only thing that's important is to work precise so that the center line of all these all three holes are exactly in line um, reason why that's important may speak for itself but when these two aren't aligned with that one you can't fit the socket in so need to work some kind of precise and also we're making a tool for Alexis so let's try for some sort of quality here so off we so go I'm starting off by marking the center it's a 50 by 50 millimeter piece of steel so 25 millimeters is the center line repeat that over here And use my scribe and ruler to mark the center line. Next up, I'll mark the holes. I have a very modest workshop and very little space, so bear with me that this punching method isn't the best, but if it works, it works. And that's the thing that counts at the moment. 
Measure twice, check once. These are 66, mill 66 millimeters apart, and this one should be 33, and that one is about 33. We got some wiggle room here. So, off to the drill it is. Here they are, all three holes, and they are all aligned. So we're off to a good start here. So I just finished drilling the eight and a half millimeter holes through which these bolts should fit, and they do. Next up is the most tedious bit, making these tools, and that's using my step drill to create a hole with a 30 millimeter, millimeter diameter. So my 22 mil socket fits through. So there you have it, one big hole to fit a socket through and two through holes for the bolts that bolt directly into the pulley. So what you say, let's go to the car and have a test fit, see you in a sec. Back at the car, there seems to be a small problem with my tool I just made, it's running into that, sorry about that. It's running into this section of the bodywork of the car, so I have to make a quick solution. Maybe I can bolt it in and hold it by hand and put it in its usual position. Maybe that'll work too. <laughs> what do you know? It'll fit in there standing up straight. So I can hope I can hold the tool with my left hand and pull the torque wrench with uh, with my right hand. So I'll screw in the, those bolts next. There must be some kind of thread in there, but I can't really feel it. There's some dampening material because it's a harmonic damper too. Some rubber material in there. Important thing is that the entire thing is as far in as possible. So let's give it a try. So for the first time in a long period, my measurements seem to be on spot. The get you guys a little bit closer. You can see the bolts are in place, and the nut is 
in the exact middle. So that worked out fine. It's a bit tight in here, so but now come the hardest part. The last time I loosened one of these pulley bolts, well, I estimate they were torqued to 700 newton meters. Anywho, I'll get you guys set up over there so you can have some fun watching me trying to struggle this one out. Oops. Oh boy, it's loose already. <laughs> oh, that was easy. Actually, quite a big relief for me. I'm not even sure I needed to make this tool in the first place. There you have it. And the timing. Timing marks are still aligned, so that went well. So I've got my bearing puller on and give it a whirl. I, I expect this to come fairly easy, but you never know. Don't jinx it. Oh boy, this really is easy. There you have it, one crankshaft pulley off. So the next thing I need to remove is this fan bracket over here. It has four nuts and bolts, or two nuts, two bolts on the front. And then you can, you can pull it off, but then you run into this. One bolt here, one bolt on top of the air conditioning compressor. And one down there. Oh, there's another bolt down there. So I need to unbolt the air conditioning compressor too, in order to remove this fan bracket. Fast forward 25 minutes of struggling. The bolt down below was easy to get out. This one on top wasn't, but then I had a brilliant idea of getting the battery tray out and find someone's missing 10 millimeter 10 millimeter socket now this one off so according to my plan the entire fan bracket should come off now fan bracket is out and now we have a clear view on the timing of the mighty one juicy fe i could see this Tensioner pulley and idler pulley over here, a bit from the outside. But what strikes me the most is how dirty it is in here. It's a bit sweaty. It might be the um, the front crankshaft seal. When you look, you can see this marks around the seal. Be signs of the first signs of leaking, but it's incredibly dirty behind here. I'm not used to seeing that from these engines, and also a lot of dirt in between here. Sorry, a lot of dirt in between here, but it has everything to do with us working on the engine, the engine being incredibly dirty, so it fell down there. So, the first order of business again is to clean things out a bit here. With the whole shebang off, I can give you a closer look to what is a common problem on the early LS400s, and that was the power steering pump leaking onto the alternator, leaking into the coils and windings and causing the alternators to fail. And it probably happened to this car too. The guy I bought a car from told me he stranded with a dead battery and the alternator wasn't working and he replaced it. Well, it's very clear that this is a new alternator, so I'm glad for that he done that. It's also been a couple of days since I drained the coolant system. I drained the radiator and both cylinder banks. 
I'm not sure if I've shown you yet, maybe in a previous episode. I don't know yet because I haven't edited that. Um, yeah, in the end you saw this, well, milky rust-like substance coming out and settled down in here now. And it seems to be well, some kind of rust from an iron part somewhere in the cooling system. But on top is clear fluid, so there was no uh, oil getting into the cooling system. Another thing that makes me hopeful. But for now, let's call it a day. Uh, get my tools clean and sorted out. Cover the engine up. And go ahead tomorrow. <laughs>